Well, I'm not sure if you've heard, but NVIDIA has announced new graphics cards, and they promise new levels of performance. And there's been a significant amount of discussion on the frame rates in the NVIDIA slides being based on frame gen. Now, I personally don't have a huge problem with DLSS. I don't mind some upscaling here and there when it's necessary, but I am somewhat skeptical about potentially three out of four frames on the screen being generated by an AI algorithm. This video is going to be about why I think NVIDIA is leaning into AI frame gen so heavily for the 5000 series. Part of the reason I personally am kind of interested in the 5000 series is that I was one of those stupid people back in October of 2020 that shelled out a lot of money for a 3090. And look, we are about four and a half years on from that, and it's kind of rolling around in my head at what point do I think about upgrading? Is this the right time? And I'm a little lukewarm about investing $2,000 in a card, which, yeah, compared to the 3090, is going to offer a substantial increase in performance, but is also going to require a lot more power. Now, I think the first place that things really start to show up of what type of strategy NVIDIA is taking here is when you look at the hardware uplift versus the 4090. If you look at the 4090 versus the 5090, you see the 5090 has about a 30% uplift in the CUDA cores, the tensor cores. The texture and floating point performance is roughly 25 to 30%. And this kind of corresponds to a lot of the rasterization stuff that people have been talking about, where the performance uplift looks like it's about 30%. Now, the real eye-popping numbers here are the AI tops. Now, this is going to be AI performance. The 5090 is going to be two and a half times faster at AI than the 4090. And on the one hand, it makes sense that you need to build a card that's capable of doing heavy AI lifting if you're going to rely on frame gen. However, I think that's actually the opposite. I think what's happening is that Blackwell was actually built for AI. And I kind of think that the GPU here is more of a secondary product, and so frame gen becomes more of a necessity than a driver in selecting the AI performance level. Here's some data to back that up. There is a repository of financial filings called Edgar, and if we go out there and we look up NVIDIA's filings, we can dig into the 10Ks and see where does NVIDIA actually make their money. And the thing that we're really going to be interested in here is the segment level data. And we can see that there are two broad business segments for NVIDIA, compute networking and graphics. Note that these are separate segments in the company. The nice thing about that is we can look at revenue and operating income separately for each of these segments. And you can see at the end of 2023, Compute networking dwarfed graphics as far as the revenue. And it also dwarfed graphics when it comes to operating income. Which means in the more recent year, NVIDIA is making way more money off of the compute networking, which is heavily influenced by, well, they just tell us, the year-on-year -year increase was due to higher data center revenue. Compute grew 266% due to higher shipments of NVIDIA Hopper GPU computing platform for the training and inference of LLMs, recommendation engines, and generative AI applications. Now, I went back even further than this, and over the past 10 years, revenue in data center has grown on average average 73% a year, and that has actually increased over the past five years to almost 75% per year compounded growth. On the other hand, gaming has only grown at 21% over the past 10 years, and that's actually slowed down over the past five years, only growing at about 11% per year. Here you can see visually the impact of this. NVIDIA is simply no longer a graphics company. Graphics is now just a small part of what they do. Now, in an objective sense, they do still make a lot of money from GPUs. But whenever you're sharing silicon, 
the R&D is mostly going to develop AI capabilities. NVIDIA typically spends anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of their total revenue in R&D expenditures. But if you look at R&D to gaming, in the past couple years it's been 80 to 83 percent. And the reason for this is that gaming revenue has not actually grown. Over the past few years it's actually shrank a little bit, while R&D has taken off. And those R&D dollars are mostly going to develop processing units, capable of accelerating AI applications. So the NVIDIA 50 series is based on the Blackwell architecture, and the flagship Blackwell product is not the 5090, it's the GB200. It is a data center computing platform which focuses on AI and accelerated computing. Now, if you look, compared to the previous generation of NVIDIA products, everything here is focused on improving improving model training and throughput for LLMs and AI acceleration. And I think fundamentally, this is why NVIDIA is going to push so hard for the adoption of frame gen. I don't think it's as much about ray tracing being hard. I think it's because this is the technology they have. They have put all their money into increasing performance for data center AI. And the outcome of this is your 50 series GPUs are simply going to be far more capable of AI than the previous generation because that's where the money went. And for gamers who aren't really a fan of frame gen or AI upscaling or things like that, uh, I don't know what to tell you. NVIDIA is just no longer primarily a graphics company. It's not the biggest factor in their decision making. They are going to build products for AI. And I think this is really the story I'm trying to tell here. The reason why NVIDIA is leaning so heavily into AI is because that is now their product. Prior to 2022, NVIDIA made graphics cards which turned out to be really good at AI acceleration. Now, NVIDIA is making AI accelerators that are also pretty good at doing graphics. Prior to 2022, graphics cards were primarily for graphics, and AI was kind of a secondary benefit. Now, NVIDIA is making AI accelerators, and graphics capabilities are now becoming more and more the secondary benefit of that technology. And what this means for me personally is that I'm probably not going to upgrade this generation. I think the power scaling is a little nuts, and 3090's still a pretty darn good graphics card. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments, so feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.